Lucifer Plank, and we're here at the All-American Grooming Show in Chicago, hosted by Jerry Schimberg. And I'm getting ready for one of my lectures that has gotten just absolutely great reviews, and it's Canine Anatomy. And I wanted to give you a little sneak peek of what we're doing before the actual show starts. And we're painting up this unbelievable Doberman. And the artist from Notes from Grooming Tables is actually painting the skeleton on the dog. So I want to give you a sneak peek behind the scenes what's going on. So let's come on in and take a look at this. Come on in. This is the artist from Notes from the Grooming Table, and this is Jennifer Goldfine. And Jennifer, who, who do we have up here? Um, Gaza. And Gaza, what is, what's his full name? It's um, Champion Wyndham and Roddy's Lucky Strike. Whack. Uh, awesome. Well, this is the first time that we've actually been able to use a dog of this quality, and this is just absolutely amazing. So what Lisa is doing is she's just painting on the basic bones so that when we do the canine anatomy lecture, we're going to talk about how the, the anatomy, the bone structures, and the muscles all interplay with the actual grooming of the dog. So we're going to go ahead and let Lisa and Gaza and Jennifer finish up because they've got a lot of work before we actually go on stage. And we're going to let you take a peek once Gaza is all finished and up on stage in front of an audience. But I just want to give you that quick sneak peek to see kind of the behind the scenes, some of the things that we do. Lisa, how long does it normally take you to paint up um, a dog like this for this particular lecture? Three hours. Three hours. So mm -hmm. she's got some work to do. So we'll let ribs them get... Ribs are awful. Oh, she says <laughs> the ribs are awful. <laughs> so we're going to let them go ahead and get to finish up their job, and I'm going to go down and set up for the lecture. So we'll see you down there. The bone structure of the dog. And if I can have Lisa and Jennifer come on in, we have an unbelievable demonstration for you. This doesn't give you just a quick click over the bones, but instead of talking about a slide, we actually got a beautiful black Doberman that the artist Lisa Van Sweden from Notes from the Grooming Table. Is her not work not amazing? <laughs> of his reach. 
If I were trimming a dog's pads and I were to ask the leg to come back farther than what he's comfortable, can you see how that bone's starting to play? Do you think I deserve to get bit if I push him to an uncomfortable state? Absolutely. He has limitations on what his, what his bones will allow him to do. If I were to pull this leg out to the side, Notice also I'm asking him. I'm not just whipping his leg out underneath him. That's another thing. Ask your dogs. They'll normally cooperate with you. But how much outward play does he have? Here, his muscles start to bind up. He doesn't have a lot of reach out this way. So again, if you're asking the dog for nail trimming or feet trimming, and you're asking to come out too far, and they start to bounce around, think about what the limitations of the muscles and the, and the bones are, are doing. Now, when we're actually trimming a, a dog, all of the patterns are going to be set based on bone and muscle structure. So you want to accentuate the layback of the shoulder. You want to accentuate the length of the neck. But underlying, here's your x-ray vision. I think Chris was talking about it, where you close your eyes and you see the bones underneath the skin and the fur. You want to accentuate the layback of the shoulder. You want to um, use the pattern. A lot of times when we're working with patterns, these last couple ribs, are where a lot of the patterns are set. Say you're looking at an English setter. This is going to be the highest point of your rise over here. That's going to be one of your reference points. If we go back to the shoulder, right where the muscle starts to turn here, right at the top of the elbow, here's your elbow, right where it starts to turn in, this is going to be your reference point for a lot of the patterns that you're going to set on maybe your carriers. Or say you've got a little Shih Tzu that's coming in, you want to do a little more stylized trim. Maybe it's a four on the body or maybe one of the shorter guard combs. <laughs> You're going to blend down into a little fuller leg. That turn of the muscle right above the elbow, that's your pattern line that you're going to be using to set it. And because you're using the actual muscle, do you think you can get the same distance or the same, same symmetry on the other side? Now you've got a reference point to use from side to side so that you get the dog equal side to side. When we're working with the rear, again, you want to show off the croup. This is the bone that is underneath. This gives the dog the reach and drive. You see how he does this kind of, oh, that looks kind of slippery. slippery. I'm going to put my hand right there just to get it. I'm going to, nope, I'm going to pull his leg and just move it forward and move it back. He's really he's putting all his weight in it. But can you see how that bone is going to, here's his backward reach and his forward reach. But his bones, his hip here, this is a ball and socket, and in the shoulder, it's tied together. There's no ball and socket in the shoulder, it's tied together with tendons and muscles. The hip is a ball and socket, so they have a little bit more um, um, outward mobility because it is a socket situation. But still, if you come up too far, is that dog going to be uncomfortable? Is he going to stand for you? He's not. So pay attention to what the bones and the muscles are. Where this joint is right here, this is, if you're coming around and putting angulation in on the rear and you're trying these little mutton chops, uh -uh. you want to show off the bone structure. You want to show off the angles of the, of the dog. Here's your farthest point out, right at the ischium bone right here. And here is your farthest point in. This is the tightest point, right at the bend of the knee. And if you actually ask the dog to lift his leg, yeah. is it, is it one right there? Right there, that's your tightest point. That's going to give you that nice angle, and then it's going to flow out to the hock. So you're accentuating the bone structure that's going on in the rear assembly. Does that make sense? When you're looking at the head, and we don't have the bones painted on the head, but your stomp area here is going to be a key reference point. You can feel it on most of the dogs. There's a little bit of a rise. Not all of them, but most of them have a little bit of a rise. But you're going to use the bone structure to help you set up the head style. If it's a poodle, if it's, a, if it's one of the terriers, how are you going to do that? We'll go into that a little bit more. But always, it doesn't matter what breed you're working on. We use a Doberman because, well, it's hard to paint up one of my white dogs. There's too much fur and I'm not shaving them. So for this particular demonstration, we do need to use a smooth coated dog. But when you look at these dogs, all the dogs are made up of the same bones and muscles. And it doesn't matter what breed it is. So be able, when you're working on these dogs, think about what the bone structure is underlying when you're working with them. 
Gaza and, and um, Jennifer are going to be around along with Lisa Van Sweeten after this lecture. We are going to be over at the booth doing some photos if anybody wants to get a photo with all of us in Gaza. We can certainly make that happen. But we're going to go ahead and let him hop down. I will do help here. Um, we do? Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Sitting there. <laughs> oh. Lisa and Jennifer and Gaza have been up early. 